The physical screening test, commonly referred to by its acronym, the PST, is one of the first obstacles a Navy SEAL hopeful must go through on the journey to becoming a Navy SEAL. This isn't a test that is just performed once, or twice, or three times. If you're planning on becoming a Navy SEAL, this will be a test you will have to take multiple times. It is THE initial standard the Navy holds you to in Naval Special Warfare or Naval Special Operations. So this means that even if you do not want to be a SEAL, but you still want to do something like SWIC or EOD for example, you will be taking the same exact test, just with slightly different test standards. So while this video focuses on the SEALs, you should still pay attention and learn from this if the community you want to join requires you to take the PST. By the end of this video, you will know what the Navy SEAL PST is, what standards will be expected of you, why the Navy has you take it, and how to crush it and get that well-earned contract. If you're willing to put in the work, that is. We'll even show you a way to calculate your PST scores to see how you're performing compared to other people currently in the Navy SEAL pipeline. Before we dive into the actual test, there's a few things we need to cover to help give you a better understanding of what's going on and why you're taking it. You might be asking yourself, why the PST? You might have even heard that the PST really doesn't matter in butts, and while that statement may hold some truth to it, your performance in it is still significantly proportional to your success in training, and whether or not it matters in the long run does not negate the fact that you still need good numbers to get a contract. In training, you'll be putting a lot of stress on your body through physical exertion by means of calisthenics, running, swimming, and a whole slew of other activities. The Navy needs some sort of gauge to see how in shape you are, and your chances of making it through the pipeline. While the PST is not the end-all be-all, it is a good starting point and something you will need to know how to perform well in. Keep this in mind, and we must stress this. Just because you can crush the PST, does not mean you will crush it in butts. While there is a correlation, there is no causation. There are minimums for this test, but if you're only hitting the minimums, you're nowhere near the standard the SEALs are looking for. You might have gotten away with minimum scores back in the early 2000s, but not today. If you plan on joining as an officer, you'll have even higher standards to reach than the enlisted ones, which are already tough to achieve in the first place. If you're active duty, your standards will be even higher compared to your civilian counterparts. There are way less slots available for fleet returnees, so your scores need to be the best of the best. If you're trying to get a contract as a civilian, each time you take the PST, your scores are put in a lottery, so to speak, and you're ranked amongst those who are also competing for a contract. There are standards you can reach where you auto-qual and get a contract without the lottery, but that's a whole other discussion. Now that you have a basic idea on the why and process of the PST, let's dive into the actual components of the test. What makes up the Navy SEAL PST? The events of the PST are a 500-yard swim, then a 10 minutes rest, max push-ups in 2 minutes, then a 2 minutes rest, max sit-ups in 2 minutes, then a 2 minutes rest, max pull-ups in 2 minutes, then a 10 minutes rest, and then a mile and a half run. Sounds simple, right? Wrong. At a first glance, the PST seems simple, but many people fail, and many people don't make it up to the standard for the SEALs, or whatever community they desire. There's an entire science to the PST, so much so that Stu Smith, a former Navy SEAL, has spent decades helping people maximize their PST scores and lead them to success in training and beyond. We have him here with us to help you out as we go section by section in the PST. He's a former Navy SEAL officer who graduated from the Naval Academy, and is a certified strength and condition conditioning specialist who has written several books on the topics of training and preparing for selection. Some of the articles and books he has written will be linked in the description below, and we highly recommend you go give them a look after this video. Hey, thanks General Discharge for having me on. I'm a big fan of you guys, so honored that you would ask me to be a part of this program. One thing is for sure, I have been focused on the PST for decades, not only myself as a young SEAL candidate back in the 80s when I started this journey, but also going through the process, learning how to crush this test, and then becoming a SEAL for about eight years. And then when I got out, I have been focused on actually coaching, coaching not only this test, but every other test that is required to get one of these tactical fitness jobs. Military, law enforcement, firefighters, special ops. So this one is really no different than all the others, um, other than it has a swim at the very beginning. It is a test to get to the training. However, crushing this test does not mean you are going to 
be assured you're going to get through buds. The PT test that we are talking about today is only really just focus on getting you to the training. And do you meet those standards? Glad to have you on here, Stu. Okay, let's get into the PST breakdown section by section. First up is the 500 yard swim. The minimum time required is 12 minutes and 30 seconds. Goggles are optional. You'll be doing the swim with either the combat side stroke or the breast stroke. Both strokes must be conducted without an overhand recovery, as in your hand must remain below the surface of the water. You're guaranteed to be better off conducting this swim with the combat side stroke, as you'll be doing this stroke during the entirety of SEAL training. The pool it will be conducted in will either be a 25 or 50 yard or meter pool. The pool length will have an impact on your times, as doing this in a 25 yard pool will mean you get 20 kickoffs, versus in a 50 yard pool where you'll only get 10 kickoffs. If those 10 extra kickoffs save you a second, second or two, that's a free 10 to 20 seconds for you. The more you know. Stu Smith has trained thousands of candidates on the combat side stroke, enabling them for success in the PST. Let's hear what he has to say on the swim. All right, so the swim is just one of those great equalizers that usually will set you apart from joining the Navy or joining a different branch of service. Many people look at that swim and say, woof, don't want to be any part of that and they will just move on and go do something else. This test is a 500 yard swim. My goal for everybody who comes and trains with me is to try to get an 820. And the reason why I have 820 is if you do the math, 500 yards, 500 seconds. It's easy math, 100 yards, 100 seconds, 200 yards, 200 seconds, and that's your pace. And if you can learn to do the swim without a lot of effort, that means good technique, good conditioning, you can crush this test and get under nine easily. The minimum standards, 1230. But the competitive time and the average time of guys now who are going is 930. So my standard that I have is 820. And what that's going to do is that's going to put you in the top 25% of the class. And here's why that's important is because if you have a school that boasts a 75 to 80% attrition rate, you want to aim for the top 20, 25% of the class. It just means that much to your success if you can go in a little bit more prepared. So the swim that I teach, there's a great article that I'll, I'll link in this description for you. It's called Pull, Breathe, Kick, Glide, One Mississippi, Two Mississippi, Repeat. That is the title of the article. The reason why I named it that is that is the sequence of the combat swimmer stroke. It's top arm, bottom arm, kick and recover, hold that glide, one Mississippi, two Mississippi pull. What a lot of people do is they neglect that glide and they just constantly move. Next thing you know, they get really tired, boom, they're done, and they can't pass the swim test. Or maybe even do not finish. So you gotta learn the technique first, then let's start turning that into more of a workout. One of my favorite workouts to do is called the 50-50 workout, where you do a 500-yard warm-up, any stroke. I just want you to get used to swimming 500 yards and then associating 500 yards with a warm-up. That's very powerful psychologically for what you are trying to do. You can at least walk in there and say, oh, 500-yard swim, it's my warm-up takes a lot of the anxiety out of the game. Because the last thing you want to do is blow all your energy in this first event because you still have push-ups, sit-ups, pull-ups, and a mile and a half run that you have to crush. Thanks, Stu. As he said, the swim is really what gets a lot of people. Do not tax yourself and do it at a pace where you're not dead once you get out of the water. After a 10 minute rest, next up is the push-ups. You're going to do as many as you can in two minutes. You will start the push-up event in the front leaning rest position, with your palms on the deck directly beneath or slightly wider than the shoulders, and your feet together on the deck. Once you are in place, you will not be able to take your hands off the deck, move your legs or feet, and to rest, you have to stay in an upright position. Each push-up, you will be expected to break 90 degrees with your arms, or touch your partner's fist depending on who's proctoring the exam. When you go back up, your arms must be straight at the end of the rep. The test will end if you're given more than two warnings on your form. Stu, what do you have to say on the push-ups? So, push-ups, real easy part of the test. Not many people fail this. But most people, you know, taking this test during the recruit process are pushing around 80 or more push-ups. 
So my goal for most people is try to get into that 80 to 100 range of push-ups. One of my techniques is to exert on the up. So that means you're pushing quickly as you can to get up and let gravity take you down. Don't waste time coming down slowly. You're gonna touch someone's fist underneath your chest on the ground and you're gonna straighten your arms. Make sure when you practice these, you are also actually going all the way up. There's a lot of these half reps you see that don't count and you will get busted real quick by the proctor. Plus, you really need to balance this out with some plank poses as well because staying a flat back for two minutes you know is basically a plank pose and you're doing push-ups at the same time so you got to have good core strength and you got to have good upper body strength and muscle stamina so that is the push-up get pushing the minimum amount of push-ups you'll need to do for this event is 50. all right after a two minutes rest you're going to be doing the sit-ups also called the curl-ups you'll do as many as you can in two minutes you will do the sit-ups on a flat surface while someone's holding down your feet with your butt about 10 inches away from your heels and your hands crossed on your shoulders on the up portion your elbows must touch no more than three inches below your knee to count as a rep and on the down portion your shoulder blades must touch the deck you're allowed to rest in either the up or down position, but you must keep your hands touching your upper chest at all times. You will be stopped if your butt comes off the ground, if your hands come off your chest, if you rest for more than five seconds, or if you receive more than two warnings for form. Let's see what Stu has to say on the sit-ups portion of the PST. Sit-ups is all about pacing. When I took my first Navy fitness test, I failed it. I was at the Naval Academy, took my first two-minute sit-up test, and I went out like a bat out of hell. I think I was like at 35 in 30 seconds, which is not that hard to do. But in the next minute and a half, I didn't even get 30. And so I failed. You know, it was the first sit-up test I ever took. But the second one, I took two days later. I pulled back my pace. I exerted on the up, let gravity take me down, kind of paused for half a second, and I got 80 in two minutes. Boom. I didn't get stronger in those two days. I got smarter and learned how to pace myself. People don't know that they should pace themselves with sit-ups. That's the most important part. But you also should balance it out too with a lot of planking because that's going to help the core system develop versus only working your hip flexors and your abs. And that will also help you with being able to hang in that up position for push-ups. No matter how many reps of sit-ups you do, you should be doing that many seconds of plank pose in that same workout as well. Stu mentioned to do a second of plank for every sit-up you do in your training. If any of you OGs remember, back in the earlier days of general discharge, we did a video showing Stu's sit-up sit program, which talks about that. We'll leave the link to that in the description for those who want to increase their sit-ups. The minimum amount of sit-ups you'll need to do for this event is 50. After another two minutes rest, you'll move on to the pull-ups portion of the PST. This will be performed on a pull-up bar. What a shocker, right? You'll perform as many pull-ups as you can do in two minutes. Your hands will be in an overhand grip on the bar, at or around shoulder width apart, and you will start with your arms fully extended. On the up portion, your chin will go over the bar, but not rest on it, which then you will go all the way back down with your arms completely straight. During the two minutes, you may rest in the down position, but as soon as any of your hands come off the bar, the test is over. You are not allowed to rest your chin on the bar, kip, or change your grip. Stu, what do you have to say about the pull-ups? Pull-ups are the heavy weight lifting of calisthenics. They require you to lift your entire body weight over the bar using your arms. And this is very hard for people. So just like push-ups, you need to turn this strength exercise into an endurance exercise. You need to exert on the up, let gravity take you down. But you don't want to go down too fast because you go down too fast, you could pop an elbow, you could pop your shoulder. I've seen a lot of shoulder injuries coming from people who are doing crazy kipping exercises. These have to be perfect pull-ups. You can't move your legs. You can't be doing these butterfly pull-ups or whatever those are called. Just up and down like a piston using your arms. I would do pull-up workouts every other day. Maybe even give yourself a two-day break once. I have this free two-week protocol where you do 
pull-ups and push-ups 10 days straight. So you take your max number that you can do in a set, multiply it by five. That's your daily number of pull-ups and push-ups that you can do. Do that for 10 days straight, rest for three days, test on day 14. I'll put the links to those in the description as well. You guys can check that out. That program he just mentioned is the same thing we said for the sit-ups. So yes, you can do that with the other calisthenics too. The minimum amount of pull-ups you'll need to do for this event is 10. And that's it for the calisthenics. The last thing you got ahead of you, after a 10 minute rest of course, is a mile and a half run. This run will be performed on a track or route, in running shoes, t-shirt, and shorts. Once the timer starts, you will run. You'll get to the end as quickly as you can. The event will only end if you deviate from the course or stop running or walking, except if you need to retie your shoes or remove something from them. Once you finish your run, that's it. The PST is now over. Stu, what do you have for us on the run? One of the most important things about the run is just remember what you've just endured. This is the last event of a PST where you've done swimming, push-ups, sit-ups, and pull-ups. So your upper body is pumped right now. One of the most important things you need to do is get that blood down from your upper body into your legs before you start a timed run. So what we do is we jog for five minutes during that 10 minute break, shaking out our arms, loosening up, and just get trying to start pumping the blood down to the legs. I just call this the PFT transition. If you Google search that, you can find a couple articles on transitioning. There's another good article about if your run is always worse after pull-ups, push-ups, and sit-ups. I'll put the link in there for you as well. Once again, this is a pacing exercise where people screw this up is they start off way too fast um, or they just burn out because they're not properly fueled because they've just burned out all their glycogen and blood sugar from the previous exercises. You're going to want to make sure you're sipping on something that has some sugar in it because you're going to need it. The last thing you want to do is take caffeine because caffeine at this is just going to jack your heart rate up. And the last thing you need to do is to be artificially elevated into that anaerobic zone already because you're going to be anaerobic. Last thing you need to do is go above that and just burn yourself out. So my advice is to try to get this one in nine minutes. That's a good above average score. That means 90 second quarter miles. That means three minute half miles. That's a six minute mile. You, you need to learn that pace. Your runs should look like that pace. If you're nowhere near that, you know, start off with a seven minute mile as your goal pace. And your, your quarter mile workouts, your half mile workouts will be at that pace. Once you start doing that, you can start seeing results in that six minute mile and that next thing you know, the nine minute mile and a half is not far away from that. So once again, that transition is very important. So you're feeling fresh when you get into it. So make sure you get the blood flowing to your lower body. The minimum time for the run is 10 minutes and 30 seconds. We weren't kidding when we said there's a lot to the Navy SEAL PST. It's a taxing event that is the gatekeeper to you and a shot at butts. Stu, any closing thoughts on the PST? Ooh, well, this has been fun. General Discharge, thanks for having me on here. My final comments on this would be the PST is nothing but a tool for you to get to SEAL training. There's a whole lot more to BUDS than the PST. If you're only training for the PST, you have a really good chance of getting to BUDS, but you have a 0% chance of getting through BUDS. Make sure you actually have some time in your timeline to not only crush this PST, but actually prepare for the actual events at BUDS. Otherwise, you'll be part of that 75 to 80 percent attrition rate and i would hate to see that happen so with that general discharge thanks so much for having me on i've really enjoyed it uh, you guys keep crushing it well said Stu, and thanks we always crush it here we can't stress that enough while the pst is a gauge it is by no means an end-all be-all Get good at it, but also focus on other aspects of your training too. If you want to see how your scores are, as well as compare your scores to how other candidates perform that are in training, the SEAL SWIC website has a PST calculator for both SEAL enlisted and officer candidates, as well as SWICs. All you gotta do is enter your scores and they will let you know your chances of a contract and tell you where you're doing well, as well as where you need improvements. We will leave a link to this in the description below. To recap, the Navy SEAL PST is an endeavor everyone needs to master who wants to do some sort of 
Spec Ops job in the Navy. Train hard and smart. Listen to what was said in this video, and you will be well on your way. Again, there are links for Stu Smith's articles and books in the description below. There's more to preparing for Navy SEAL selection than just preparing for the PST. Eventually, you'll have to get some decent gear to help you better prepare for the rigors ahead. That gear can get pretty pricey. ATAC Fitness solves that problem for you. ATAC Fitness is a veteran-owned company that sells gear for Spec Ops selection at a very competitive price. And you can save even more money with an extra 10% off if you use our code General Discharge at checkout. Your wallet will thank you, and most importantly, you will be better prepared for success in selection. Again, use code General Discharge at checkout to get 10% off. The link to their website is in the description below. Well, that is the down and dirty of the Navy SEAL PST. If you learned something from this video, make sure to give us a like and subscribe to our channel. As always, thank you for watching. Do you even want to be here? A big shout out to all of our YouTube members and our patrons over at our Patreon. Thank you all so much for taking the extra step in supporting our channel. It is much appreciated. If you'd like to be featured on a General Discharge video, consider joining our membership with the link in the description or the join button to the left of the subscribe button, or go give our Patreon a look and join the team. Here's Nick Nausea. All your friends are subscribing to General Discharge and you don't even want to be here.